Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I am Lane Doak from Recharge Robotics, and today we're going to be going over the basics of Vuforia and implementing that into your autonomous. So as you can see, I already have a decent bit written here. However, we're going to just tell you where you want to put your pro your code on navigating around, uh, testing to see which Vu mark it is, and if it is not visible, what to do from there. So first things first, you have your little rotational values and your target values and that just basically tells you how far you're off from the target. This isn't really that necessary however it's really nice to have if you're basing movement off of um, the target itself which would have been really helpful last year uh, for a lot of the newer programmers. So as you can see here I just have the initialization process you can go to uh, FTC robot controller, Java, external samples and scroll down to concept vu identification and you can copy and paste this right into your code the only thing you'll have to change is your license key and I've already done that so after you're finished initializing your main code and changing your license key you're then just going to want to move straight down to here uh, you're going to want to activate your vuforia relic trackables when you're finished with that, you can move right down onto this. Um, all of the code that you see here will be in a text file in the description. You can download that and use it. So as you can see here, we have our target, extract the X, Y, and Z components of the offset of the target relative to the robot. And same with this, except for the rotational values. And we basically use that to tell us which image it is, and then tells us the X, Y, and Z for the target and you can also add basically the same exact thing here except for all the rotational values and that's really easy to do just by changing all the T's to an R just like that and then you have all the rotational values for these as well however seeing as we don't ne we're not going to use that uh, for this example today uh, we might in later videos but today we're just going to stick with these so this is the main code right here that we're using. It first checks to see if the if the image is visible. If it is not, it says VUMARK is not visible. And that basically just prevents any errors in the code itself. After that we check to see if it gives a, it can give us positions in general from the uh, image. And if it cannot, then nothing will happen. If it can, then it'll give us these and it'll initialize all these and give us the values that we need. If the image is visible, then we'll immediately go straight down to here and test uh, which image it is. If it is the left, it'll give us this bit of code. It'll tell us VUMARK is left. If it is right, it'll do the same thing except for right and same with center. And this is basically the testing to see which image it is and basing your decisions off of that. So let's say you wanted an integer value that basically told your program to do this, this, and this. So int equals let's say Vuforia. Vuforia test. Okay, we're just going to name it that for now. And then down in here, you can just go Vuforia, Vuforia test equals whatever. One, if it's this, Vuforia test equals two. And you can continue on with that. Same with this one. And then you can just set up more if statements in your later program to test which value it is and then make a decision based off of that. Um, I would prob I would personally just write it straight into here and then do your work just inside these if statements here. Or you can even create a function down in here that would also test to see which are which. However, in this example, we're not going to do that. We're going to leave that all to you. So this is the main chunk of code, as I said. There's not really much else to Vuforia other than the initialization itself. The initialization is relatively easy to do, especially if you have that example that I showed you earlier. Um, but yeah, so you're basically putting your code into these chunks dependent on which one it is. It's pretty easy. I'll just give you an example. So. Let's first create a motor and then initialize it. So DC motor, let's just name it right. And then we'll do the same 
four left. So then we're gonna go into the into citation and we're gonna go right equals harbor map dot DC motor dot get and then we're just gonna name it R and do the same with the left. And there you have that. Then you can go right down into here and do, let's say you wanted it to drive backwards. So left dot set power, we're gonna make that positive and right is going to be a negative one. And then I guess we could do, this is just gonna be raw code. We're not gonna have any functions or anything, so sleep. Let's make it wait half a second and then turn around. And then turn, so right left dot set power. Um, let's actually just keep it the same and then just rotate. Right dot set power one. Okay, and then it'll rotate and then you can make it sleep for however long. I'd say that's probably gonna take about a little bit more than half a second. So, and then we're just gonna stop. So left dot set power zero and right dot set power zero. So there you have it, it goes, it goes backwards. And then rotate robot robot and then stop robot okay and then you can do the same thing for this or depending on something else uh, after you rotate you could continue going forward x amount of distance um, you could either use a gyro or something else to tell how far you've gone um, yeah there's a lot of possibilities for this and now that we're finished with the code, now to go straight into showing you how it works, uh, what all the actual program does, and all that. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, initialize the program, and push play. As you can see, it says VooMark not visible, uh, as that's what we wrote in the program. Uh, now it sees the image, it shows us the X, Y, and Z in two different forms, one uh, really long string, and two the uh, pose with a little bit shorter strings that's uh, kind of rounded down. All right, so now to move on to what the actual phone sees. So as you can see, it tracks it, it shows the axes that we programmed in earlier. Uh, you can actually remove that and remove so it doesn't display the actual image and that will make it so it processes a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, it tracks it pretty well. Um, I'm pretty sure that's gonna conclude the video for today. Uh, one thing I will note is go ahead and click subscribe and click our notifications bar because we're actually going to be posting these a lot more often and we're actually going to be posting lots of them. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.